Kikiback, IBH, necrotic enteritis, and dermatitis are all familiar phrases to any poultry farmer. When you think of disease your birds are susceptible to, all of those probably come to mind. But there's one disease that the public associates much more closely with poultry products than any other, salmonella. Hi, I'm Alyssa from Southland Organics, where we provide natural solutions to natural problems for poultry growers. Learn more about these solutions at southlandorganics.com. The history of food safety is littered with stories of salmonella, and not just from poultry. Other meats, fruits, vegetables, and even water have been known to spread this bacteria and cause foodborne illness. Salmonellosis in people is most often associated with gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea, cramping, and nausea. More advanced degrees of the illness can include bacteremia and enteric fever. In poultry, the disease can take various forms as well. In the case of young or immunocompromised birds, watery feces, fever, lethargy, huddling near heat sources, and poor growth are all common indicators of salmonellosis. In older infected birds, however, it's not uncommon to show no signs of infection, which is part of what makes these animals such an important reservoir for this disease. Steps to decrease salmonella presence in commercial poultry range from national improvement programs to vaccination. But despite these efforts, the CDC estimates that one in every 25 packs of chicken or chicken products bought from the grocery store are infected with salmonella. This retained prevalence, even with control programs, has forced the industry to look for new answers. After hearing concerns from industry partners about the growing pervasiveness of salmonella in live birds and food products, we began to question our role in controlling the spread. This meant asking questions like, how does the bacteria spread? Is there a way to slow its growth? How could we be most effective? Our goal was to find out how we could help farmers decrease the amount of salmonella bacteria in their poultry houses. Working with Southern Poultry Research Group, we decided to start with an in vitro study of litter life to determine its efficacy against salmonella enterica serotype enteritidis. Basically, we wanted to know if our products would be effective in killing salmonella bacteria. To do this, a test organism was grown under lab conditions and then combined with a sample of litter life and allowed to grow for 24 hours. During that 24 hour time frame, optical densities were measured every two hours. Optical density is a common metric used in microbiology that measures the amount of light scattered when passed through a sample. The more bacteria that's present, the more light that'll be scattered. At the end of the 24 hour period, optical density of the sample treated with litter life was compared to the optical density of a positive control a sample that was allowed to grow with no intervention. These results were extremely hopeful. In the presence of litter life, the optical density of the sample was reduced by more than 30%, which tells us that there was some reduction in bacterial growth in those samples. Now, while these are extremely encouraging results, there are some lingering questions, but every study has its limitations. For those of you who use litter life, you know that this is a microbial product. So we have to wonder whether or not the remaining bacteria in the sample with litter life were from our product or from salmonella. We also have to question whether or not these results are fully replicable in a production setting with live birds and active bacteria shedding. Because of these unanswered questions, we are currently pursuing further testing that will allow us to quantify litter life's impact on salmonella and teratis growth in commercial poultry. We're looking forward to discovering more about our role in salmonella mitigation and what we can do on your farm. For decades, salmonella species have been a food production and safety issue. Since it's the leading cause of foodborne illness, it's no surprise that significant time, money, and resources have been poured into finding a means to control and eliminate salmonella from our food supply. At Southland Organics, we are excited to be making strides towards finding our place in these efforts. If you have any questions about this study, contact me at alyssa at southlandorganics.com. You can also reach us at 800-608-3755, leave a comment on this video, and stay updated by following us on social media at South Inorganics. Thanks for watching.